looking at solution concentration and um, there we go. Now I got it. Um, so concentration is a measure of how much solute is dissolved in a specific solvent. Okay. And you should have learned in your notes, which you took um, for section one of this chapter, that you can have different types of solvents. But let's just talk, let's just talk about maybe like uh, salt water. Okay. So salt water, you're going to have your water here. And that water will be the solvent. And then the solute would be the salt. Okay, so the salt in here would then be your solute. So you need to make sure that you understand the terms of these. So solute is dissolved in the solvent, and that makes a solution. All right. So we have different ways, different math that we can look at this. There's five different kind of math problems that we can do in relation to this. We can do a mass of solution. So if we're looking at the mass of solution, we have to add the mass of the solute or solutes. Sometimes there's more than one solute there, more than one thing mixed in. Kind of like uh, if this was Kool-Aid, Okay, so imagine that this was Kool-Aid instead of salt water. You would have the water, you would have the sugar in there, and then you would also have the Kool-Aid packet. So you would have two different solutes mixed in one solution. Does that make sense? Air is another example. You've got nitrogen is the primary component, so that's going to be the solvent. And then the oxygen will be mixed in there. And then you've got a variety of other gases, carbon dioxide and other things in the air that we're breathing right now as well. But the major component of it is the nitrogen. All right. So if we do a percent by mass, we would do mass of the solute divided by mass of the solution times 100. So here we have 3.6 grams of sodium chloride. So that is our solute divided by 100 grams of water and sodium chloride. So we have to add these two parts together to get the whole. So it would be 103.6, and then we're going to multiply that by 100. So that ends up being 3.5%. And that would be NaCl in that solution. So it's part over the whole. And we had to add the two parts together to get the whole. Easy enough for that one? All right. The next one then is done the same in a very similar fashion. Here, we've got the volume of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. So if we had a 100 mil sample and 70% of that was alcohol, what is the volume of the water? Okay, well, if we had a 100 mil sample and we want to know the volume of the water here, Well, what percent was the water? If 70% was alcohol, what percent was the water? 30. Okay. I can get the, rid of this percent sign by dividing by 100. So that would give me my volume of water over, no, I want to get rid of that. I'm going to multiply by 100 on both sides. to get rid of this 100 here. And that's gonna give me 0.3, okay? 
And then if I want to get V, then I'm going to multiply by 100, and that's going to tell me that it's going to be 30% solution. That makes sense? Or 30 milliliters. I mean, 30, sorry. It's going to be 30 milliliters. Um, since you have like a hundred milliliters, yeah, you know that seventy. Like, yeah, if you can do it in your head, yeah, it's fine. All right, um, mole fraction is the next one, and I really don't like. Uh, this is one of the ways that they do this with the A's and the B's. The B's indicate the solution and the A's indicate the solvent. I don't really like to using the AB's. I wanna show you that this exists so that if you get into college, <clears throat> you'll know that. But I'll show you down here how I like to, to kind of deal with that. Um, we, we're putting these into moles and then the moles of the solute is getting divided by the moles of within the entire solution, okay? So, we want to figure out mole fraction. We're going to assume on this one that we have a 100 gram sample. So if we have a 100 gram sample, we're just going to turn these into grams. We did that back when we were doing um, empirical and molecular formulas. I think you guys are com com um, familiar with that. Okay. So we're assuming that we have a 100 gram sample. That means that I've got 36.5 grams of HCl. So I'm gonna take 36.5 and I'm gonna divide it by its molecular mass to get that into moles of HCl. So a hydrogen is one and a chlorine is 35.5. That's a total of 36.5. So how many moles of this material do I have? One. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with water. So the molecular mass of water is two hydrogens plus 16 for the oxygen. That gives me 18 total here. So I'm going to go 62.5 divided by 18, and that's going to give me moles of water. So that's 3.47. Okay. Now, we're doing these mole fractions. And like I said, they do the Na and Nb here. I think a better way of doing it is actually doing this. Write the formula for what you're trying to deal with. Is trying to figure out, okay, is A the solvent or is A the solute? I, it's hard to remember. So if you do what, if you do this, the material down here, the formula for it, there's no question. You know what that is. So my HCl, I had one mole of that divided by the total, which would be 4.47. So the mole fraction for HCl ends up being 0.224. And then if I want to do the mole fraction for the water, I would just indicate that down here. And that would be 3.47 divided by 4.47. And that ends up being 0.754. These should add up to be 1 or not 0.999 or 1.01, .01, something right in that ballpark. Okay. If all of the mole fractions don't add up to be 1, then you goof something. Go back and check your work. There is no um, units for it because the moles are going to cancel out. 
So there's no units for mole fraction. All right, the next one. This is the most important one out of them all. If you go into AP, this is the one that you will use in AP. So we also do some of the mole fractions occasionally, but, um, but for the most part, it's all molarity. And so many things come down to molarity. You guys have seen in our labs where I've said, use six big M HCL. Have you seen that big M marked on some of your stuff all year long? You've seen this, okay? This big M stands for molarity. So molarity is going to be moles of solute in a one liter solution. So if we want to figure out what molarity is, it's moles of solute divided by liters of solution. This has to be in liters. If you have milliliters and you're trying to calculate this, you have to convert it to liters. You don't have a choice. So get used to sliding that decimal point over. Because most of our instrumentation is in milliliters. So in order to, to get it to to the math to work out right, you've got to be able to get that into, mil, or into liters very easily, okay? So when we are doing these, we are going to be taking and we're trying to figure out what we've got to, like for this one, we're trying to figure out the molarity of it, okay? So they've given us grams of glucose. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to take that grams of glucose and do what with it? Find the moles, right, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna divide it by, oh, no, not that one, bad, bad lippy. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna divide it by its molar mass, okay? Now, can you trust me on this one or do I need to do the calculations? The molar mass for glucose is 180. I took six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens, added them together, I got 180, okay? So, I just have that one memorized, but you guys can do the math if you want to spend time doing it. All right. So that gives me, when I divide that out, that gives me 0 0.0283. And that's going to be moles of glucose. Now we need to take this and we need to convert it into liters. So I'm going to slide my decimal point over 3 which will give me 0 0.1005 liters. And then I just punch that into my calculator and I get 0.282. And that's gonna be my molarity of glucose. So that's the molarity of the solution that they've prepared. Okay. Now they want to make a hundred, we're just going to call this a hundred mils. Okay. So somebody in here have the hundred mil volumetric flask at their table. You got a liter. You've got 500. You have a 50. You have the hundred. Okay. So you're going to take one of those volumetric flasks and you would take hers. Okay. And these volumetric flasks, are set for one specific volume. They're only good for one volume, okay? As opposed to your beakers where you can measure out other amounts, okay? These are only good for one volume. And if you look at the volumetric flask that I have on your table, you will see an etched line on the neck of that flask. You see that, okay? So what you would do to prepare this is you would take, and in this case, you would need 100.5 mil, which doesn't really exist. So this is kind of a bad question. Um, but you would take that volumetric flask that is designated for this amount. You are going to put this many grams of glucose down inside there. Okay, so it's going to be like a powder. 
all right? And then after you get that many grams down inside here, you are gonna fill this with water until that water meets, the, the meniscus meets the bottom of that etched line. And at that point, you will have the correct molarity for this. Now, you are not going to <coughs> add or say that you're going to add this much liquid in there, okay? Because if you remember correctly, when we mixed two things together, their volumes didn't necessarily add up. Remember the demo that I did with the really big flask, okay? So that's why you, that's how molarity works. You have this many moles of that solute present, and then you add the liquid to it that's going to be the solvent. Okay, so I went through all of that stuff with you. So usually solutions are very dilute. They come in standard molarities called stock solutions. Okay. We can prepare a less concentrated solution by diluting the stock solution. We're adding more solvent particles in. So we can rearrange the molarity equation to solve for the solute. So moles of solute would equal the molarity times liters of solution. <coughs> when we dilute this down, the moles of solute does not change. So the moles of the solute is going to equal the moles of the solute in our stock and in our diluted amount. It's just that we're going to be adding in, in our dilute amount, more solvent particles. So if we start over here, let's say that over here we have five um, or 0 0.05 moles of solute. And in that, in there, we only have 10 mils, right? Our molarity here would be 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.01. So our molarity would be five molar here, right? If I take that then, and I now make a one liter, if I take that and I put it over here, I've got my 0 0.05 moles in here, and now I'm gonna add water up to the one liter mark, now I've changed my molarity to 0 0.05 molar. I've still got the same moles of solute in there. I've just diluted it down and made it less concentrated. <coughs> and that's what happens when we get in our stock solutions in the back, they come in really concentrated. So for example, acid, hydrochloric acid comes in at 12 molar. You're not gonna use 12 molar in here. You might use six molar. So then we dilute it down. Or like for the last lab that you'd worked with, you had one molar, so we diluted it down even more. Okay? So we can actually rearrange the relationship here and do M1, V1 
equals M2 V2. This is the molarity of your stock solution. And this is the molarity of and how much you want of your dilute solution. And then typically you're going to solve for V1 to figure out how much of this you've got to measure out to get what you want. <clears throat> So over here, they're telling us that we want to end up with a two, or I'm sorry, that we have a two molar stock solution that we're starting out with. So this is for our M1, that's going to be our two molar. We're solving for V1. We want to make, there should be a decimal in there. We want to make a 0.3 molar solution and we want half a mil, half a liter of that solution. <clears throat> so I'm going to multiply these two things together and divide by two. And when I do that, I get 0 0.075 liters. So what I would do <clears throat> is I would take, I want 50 mils or half a, half a liter. So that's 500 milliliters. So I'm going to find a volumetric flask that's 500 milliliters. And I think that's yours, Ava. Yep. Okay. So this is my 500 milliliter volumetric flask because this is what I want to end up with. I am going to go and I'm going to measure and I'm going to find the most precise piece of equipment that I can to measure out this many liters of material. Now, for you guys, the thing that you've played with the most in here that's been the most accurate at this point has been the graduated cylinder, okay? We will eventually get to something called a burette in our next chapter, and that would be even more precise. And I'm going to show you, we spend a whole day learning how to work those, okay? <clears throat> so we have, we're going to use for this class, we're going to use a graduated cylinder and we're going to measure out 75 milliliters using the graduated cylinder. So 75 milliliters. And we're going to measure out 75 mils of two molar CaCl2. And then we're going to pour that in to this volumetric flask. The next step then is we're going to add water in here until it reaches the etched line. And that would be the bottom of the meniscus meeting that etched line. Then you mix it and you're done. That's how you make that. <clears throat> Okay, the volume of a solution can change with temperature. So because of that, sometimes companies will use something called molality. Just to make this confusing, there's molarity and there's molality. Okay. We use molality in here to introduce you to it. When you get into AP Chem, we do not use molality. We only use molarity and mole fraction. OK, 
Okay. So you're not going to have to deal with this later on after you get done with this course, unless until you get into college. Okay. So because of those differences, okay, here we're going to use moles of solute, which is not going to change with temperature. And we're going to use kilograms of solvent. Again, mass doesn't change with temperature either. So for this example, this student had 4.5 grams of NaCl, and they're adding that to 100 uh, grams of water. Okay. So first of all, the one thing about this problem that's very different from the other ones, all of the other ones had solution down in the bottom. This one has solvent. So be careful. That's the, that's the kicker with this problem, is that you have moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. Okay, you see the difference? All the other ones you had to add together to get the solution here. This is just, this is a part divided by a part. Instead of a part divided by a whole. So be careful. All right. So step one on this problem. We are going to divide this by its molar mass to get to moles of solute. So the molar mass this sodium is 23, this is 35.5. I added them together to get 58.5. So 4.5 divided by 58.5 <clears throat> is going to give me 0 0.0769 moles of NaCl. And then we're going to divide that by kilograms. So I need to divide this by 1,000. to get to kilograms of water. So in the end, my molality is 0.769. <clears throat> now molarity was a capital M. Molality is a lowercase m. You need to make sure that you can distinguish between the two with your handwriting. For some of you who have bad handwriting, that is important. Not calling anybody out or anything. All right. And... I think that's it. I think the next notes are... 14.3, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm good with that. Okay. So that is what you're looking at. Now, when you come in on, I think Wednesday, I think we have a lab in here. Am I right? Look at your schedule and tell me. Um, I think that's Thursday. Thursday? Okay. Okay. All right. It's 14.3, just the stuff of using the stuff we did today. The worksheet is, yeah. Yeah. So you should have homework that's 14-3. And that, then you're going to have a quiz on Wednesday on that material. Yep. Um, Minga.